Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about angle of engagement, what it is, you know, how to do it, all that good stuff. So let's get down to it. So AOE, or angle of engagement, is the angle at which the sector gears pick up tooth contacts the piston pick up tooth. Now, why is AOE important? Well, since it's the angle at which the two contact, and if they have sharp angles, like this is right here, as you can see, there's a gap between this pick between this pickup tooth and this pickup tooth. They contact very, very sharply. And what this can do over time is it can wear down your piston like this. Because the sector gear pickup tooth does not contact it all the way. It just kind of contacts it lightly and then pulls it back, which can cause a lot of wear right here on the pickup tooth. And that's what you'll see here. And this is just a random piston I found laying around in a uh, stock gun. Well, not a stock gun, but a gun I was upgrading, and uh, it was already like this. But um, as you can see, this piston is actually unusable. Moving on, we can see that we have a sharp angle right here. Well, oh no, right? It's bad, right? Well, yeah, it is bad, but is it really necessary to correct angle of engagement? Angle of engagement, I wouldn't say is necessary to correct, because necessary to what? Necessary to the gun functioning or necessary for reliability? Yes, it's necessary for the gun to, it's not necessary for the gun to function, but in my opinion it is necessary for reliability. I wouldn't really call a piston and drivetrain setup reliable if it didn't have proper angle of engagement. Now, like I said, that doesn't mean it won't work. It'll work just fine, because all stock guns have, you know, bad AoE. I've yet to find a single gun that has perfect angle of engagement. And I've opened up a lot of stock guns. So we're gonna correct this and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it with both faucet washer and sorbo. So a lot of you new techs or people who want to know how to do this, you're going to probably hear two words thrown around a lot when you're hearing angle of engagement. One of those being AOE and the other one being sorbothane. Now sorbothane is just a soft little sponge padding. It's like shock absorbent really and it, can, it has a dual purpose. It's for shock absorbent and for correcting angle of engagement because you put it on your cylinder head which protects your gearbox shell from cracking which also backspace is your piston for proper angle of engagement and then you have faucet washers faucet washers are really stiff rubber and they don't give hardly at all and they're good for correcting angle of engagement because they don't give at all and that's what we're going to go over here because there's two different ways to correct angle of engagement with these two different materials and we're going to go over it so back to this apparatus let's explain something one more time since our angle of engagement is the angle at which the sector gear and pickup tooth meet we want to put it to where it is most parallel with each other now that's that's roughly perfect angle of engagement right there without double checking myself. Now how do we get the piston to backspace like that? Well, we take either faucet or sorbothane or faucet washer to backspace the piston into proper angle of engagement. So let's do that real quick. So simply enough, I just put the standard faucet washer on the cylinder head itself. And as I can see here, I got perfect angle of engagement right here. Now, one misconception with angle of engagement that a lot of people are going to throw around is that it has to be at 12 o'clock. That simply is not true. Now, what they mean by 12 o'clock is that the sector gear pickup tooth must be facing directly upward. And on this gun, on such a sharp piston pickup tooth angle, 12 o'clock is off. It, it's overcorrected and it's not necessary and just does more harm than good. So 12 o'clock is not our positioning here. Same thing with a lot of pistons. It's just not necessary to go to exactly to 12 o'clock. And that's why a lot of people mess that up because they think AOE is something very standard. And it's very easy to do, which it is easy to do, but it's not a standard thing and it takes a little bit of work. But anyway, we can tell that our angle is pretty good here. It's actually perfect. The angle between the sector gears pickup tooth and the piston pickup tooth is perfectly parallel. That means that all the stress and all the shock that is or the energy, uh, for lack of better words, I'm sorry, in this pickup tooth is going to be spread out over more even surface and less of a sharp angle. Now this will reduce pickup tooth wear on both your sector gear and your piston pickup tooth. But as you can see now, if you're going to spin your gears around, you're going to notice it's hitting other teeth and that's going to get in the way. And that's just going to break stuff and make stuff really bad. And if you really think about it, if this is going to come around, it's going to pick up right here than right here, and that's not good either. We don't want that. So what we're gonna do is, our solution here is to remove the, this tooth right here, completely. So let's get around to that, and I'll show you guys how to do that. So, like I said, we need to remove this tooth, 
and part of this tooth. Now, people will mention like the numbers of the teeth, like oh, you need to shave down the 15th tooth or the 14th tooth, etc., etc. Well, the way we number teeth as a tech is we go from one down to here as 16, and consequently all the all the ones in between are the numbers filled in between one and 16. So this being the 15th and this being the 14th. So you remove the 15th completely and you partially remove the 14th. So we're going to completely remove the 15th and then we're going to come back and do the 14th for a particular reason. So don't go ahead and do both these steps right now before I explain something. Now how you do this is you can either use a Dremel with the attachment that I have, the cutting attachment, or you can use a file. However, I don't like using a file because it's super slow, so I'm going to use a Dremel because I'm really impatient. So I'll be right back. So I've just got done removing the 15th tooth on my yellow piston here completely and uh, I wanted to show you guys something before we move on and uh, that would be the fact that these two pistons are different and this is a Lone X-Red piston this is a Classic Army stock piston now the Classic Army stock piston is not that great but I'm just using it for example purposes so don't consider this an upgrade piston but this Lone X-Red piston is a fantastic piston for just about really anything as far as high speed or DMR stuff goes but something you, need, you do need to know when correcting angle of engagement with the red piston is is that it has these side guards here now this piston doesn't so it makes it a little more difficult to remove teeth on this one as compared to this one now some people they do remove the side guards here when they correct angle engagement and that is the bad way of going about doing it if you think about it the Linux red piston has a stronger pickup tooth because a it's thicker and b it has supports on the sides these supports kind of hold it and they hold it back really well and that's one of the reasons why Linux reds very very seldomly have pickup you know tooth issues or stuff like that because it's so well reinforced so when you correct angle of engagement you need to take special care when removing teeth in this piston it's just much more difficult but you go in like this and go side to side same thing on the opposite side so you keep it even but just do keep in mind that you don't want to damage the sides or you don't want to remove them because that weakens the pickup tooth which you don't want to do because that's the weakest part of the piston so let's go drop this piston back in the gearbox and check it out so here we have our piston dropped back into the gearbox and we can check the angle of engagement. It looks pretty good. I mean, you know, perfectly parallel. And let's check and see if it's hitting any teeth. Oh, well, see, looky there. We're hitting that 14th tooth. Now, that's a bad thing. Why is it a bad thing? Because if we run it like this, yeah, it'll work, but we're going to tear up that tooth right there. And if we tear up that tooth and we bring it back here, and this tooth is like completely gone here because it's all worn down and tore up from the it hit, the sector you're hitting it like it's not supposed to. Then we have a gap here and we're just relying on basically inertia for it to catch the 13th tooth, which is a bad thing to do because that puts a lot of stress on the pickup tooth. And examples of this can be found in other pistons that uh, I might show you guys later. If I can find some, I got tons laying around I'll have to look for. But let's barely remove just enough of the 14th tooth just so the sector gear doesn't hit it and we'll see where we're at now as you can see I've removed just enough material from the 14th tooth so that our sector gear does not hit it and that's exactly what we want right there now let's check it all out, I'm going to remove this gear real quick because it's kind of annoying okay so swinging around here, next cycle, hit it you know, parallel angle, good to go keep going, hey no 14 tooth obstruction, grabs on just fine keeps going, releases, compression, shot, boom Okay, so up until this point, we have our angle of engagement perfectly corrected here. However, we need to do one more thing. If you haven't remembered, we have not exactly you know, secured our spacer. So let's get down to that. And I'll show you guys how to do that. So before we glue it down like we're going to do, we need to do one kind of important thing. Now, this isn't really necessary in like a really low stress setup, like a stock setup to like 20 rounds a second. However, it keeps the, the glue from securing both the faucet washer and the stock pad together really well and I even do this with sorbothane it just works really well so what I do is I take a knife just a simple knife really and score it up I just make an incision here an incision here etc and it'll leave these little cross marks that have some uh, depth to it that the glue will secure into because a faucet wash is a really smooth surface and glue won't really harden to it well and also it has this kind of like oily film on it so it kind of like 
No, the glue may not stick really well. So I'm going to take a paper towel, clean up this, clean up that, and score this up with a knife or sandpaper or whatever. Sandpaper will more or less, you know, you know, smooth it out, so I really wouldn't recommend that. And I should secure this one again because it's actually loose in there. But um, that's a lot of a lot of upgrade piston uh, cylinder heads do that, so you know you might want to secure that as well. And I do this with just about everything. So I always score it, you know, and super glue it. So let's get on to super gluing it. So this part's really basic. Just gotta glue it down. I take a standard uh, super glue Loctite type of super glue I get from Walmart, and it works just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I just put some super glue here. Super glue there, there, and there, and I press down. Now, while I'm pressing down on this, you do want to make sure that the hole in the faucet washer lines up with the hole in the cylinder head. And oftentimes they're really small, so they don't like to do that. So, what do we do to fix this? Well, it's pretty simple, really. We just expand the hole. And if you expand the hole, sometimes you can get a little bit more FPS increase and you know more efficiency. It doesn't stop up and stuff like that. Because when the piston tries to go forward and the hole that it's trying to push air through isn't exactly big enough for it to push air through, you get a compression jam. And that's not very good. So you always want to expand it, and I always do that. I take a drill and a, you know, a couple screw, uh, bits and work it out. And after a couple seconds, it's stuck. So it's good to go. So I said I'd, we'd go over sorbothane, AOE correction, and we are. So hey, I installed sorbothane, and my angle is perfect, right? Well, let's look at it like this. We don't have a spring here. And, uh, you know, normally there's a spring in the gearbox, and where so within a spongy, it'll compress when the spring's installed. So let's go ahead and install our spring and see what happens. <clears throat> so there goes our angle. It's off. And oopsies. Our angle is off. Because when the spring's installed, it gets thrown off. Huh. That's a problem, isn't it? Okay, well, let's uninstall the spring real quick. Okay, so we can just, by noticing this, we can <clears throat> notice that when the spring's installed in the gearbox, the sorbo thing compresses, and when it compresses, the angle is thrown off. And since the angle is thrown off, we don't have proper AOE correction anymore. Well, how do we fix this? We fix it by correcting AOE with the spring installed. Now, it's the same process as before, but when you check, you install the spring, <clears throat> because when sorbo compresses, it gets smaller, duh, and your angle is thrown off because your piston isn't spaced back as far. It's, it's just as simple as that, and if you're saying, oh, I'm just going to use an M100 spring or an M110 spring, well, this is just an M110 spring, and it, and it compressed it enough to where our AOE is essentially useless. So you always want to have a, have a spring installed when you correct angle of engagement with sorbothane. It's just much more accurate, and if you don't, you're probably going to tear up your piston and wonder why it broke because you corrected AOE, but you didn't do it right. So we can check again, and you guys can see it again. And we can see that it's off. So remember, when using sorbothane to correct angle of engagement, please be sure to install your spring when you check it. So now we're going to go over some you know, typical questions people will have when we talk about AOE and they're correcting it. Now, what if you have two faucet washers and you put them on there? Well, you say you have one faucet washer. You put it on there and your angle of engagement is not correct because it's too far backwards. Let me explain real quick. Okay. So say our stock AOE is right here. Comes and hits it. Bad. Well, if we put one faucet washer in it, it's still not far back enough. But if we, but if we put two, it's too far back. Well, how you fix this is really simple. You just sand down your faucet washer to where the second one helps it to be right where it should be. So I find the easiest to use a sand belt or a sand table, then just sand it slowly after I've glued it down so I don't burn my hands up. And it works just fine. I take my time with it and I get it right. It's as simple as that, really. And that's all there is to doing that and correcting angle of engagement. It does take some time to tune it and get it perfectly, but trust me when I say it's well worth it, especially if you're going 25 RPS plus or when you're going over 500 FPS. You definitely want to have AOE corrected. Now, will AOE affect my air volume or cylinder volume, as I should say, and FPS output? Yes, more than likely it will affect your FPS. However, it shouldn't affect it a whole lot. At the most, I've seen it affect it maybe 50, 50 FPS, which a lot would say is really significant, which it kind of is pretty significant. At the least, I've seen 
I've actually uh, only seen at the least like five FPS decrease, and that's not that bad at all. That's acceptable in my opinion. However, really all that matters is your cylinder volume, because when you space your angle of when you space your piston back, you have less air volume to work with. So, you know, you basically you might want to get a longer cylinder with you know less of a port, etc., to you know help your air volume out if it is you know under volumed. Now. For DSG setups and high RPS setups where you're really struggling to get that FPS, the thing you can do, instead of correcting angle engagement on a cylinder head, you can correct it off the piston. And this just puts the spacer right here between the piston and piston head instead of on the cylinder head. Now, why would we do this? Well, the heavier the piston, the actual more FPS it can have because it has more joules in it, more energy basically. So when it hits the front of the gearbox shell, it transfers more energy more efficiently than it would if it were hitting the cylinder head where it has a bunch of faucet wash or a servo thing. Like I said, the more weight in your piston, the more joules it has, etc. If you have faucet washer on this cylinder, and it's a, basically a cushion on the, front of the, on the front of the gearbox, what you'll end up doing is you'll end up cushioning that joule, which will which can, in some instances, instances, decrease your FPS so much that it's unusable. That actually happened to me in one gun I was tuning when I had to install Sorbothane on it. And after I installed the Sorbothane, well, before I was installed Sorbothane, I was getting 390 FPS. I chrono all guns before I tune them, just to see where I'm getting. And I was getting 400 FPS, just right perfect. And then when I corrected angle of engagement with Sorbothane, I got 100. Now that's a, that is a huge drop. That's, that's completely unacceptable because that's completely unplayable. I mean, it's just too low. So the cylinder was volumed correctly. I did the math and found out it was just fine. The tappy plate was returning just in time to seal with the bucking. The bucking wasn't too soft or too hard. The BBs were good and the spring was well rated because it was 40 RPS and it shot just fine without premature engagement, meaning that the spring wasn't too weak. Well, I found out that as soon as I installed, sorbo uh, as soon as I installed fossil washer instead of sorbothane, I got 390 FPS. Now, that shows right there that sometimes Sorbothane can cushion the piston and spring so much that it makes your FPS you know, unusable. And so that's an issue that you'll have sometimes. And that can be corrected by using faucet washer instead of Sorbothane. And even vice versa, I've had, a, I've had weird problems where I'll use faucet washers instead of Sorbothane and I get the same weird FPS decrease. And then when I install Sorbothane, I get it back up again. No idea really. I do expand the holes like I tell you guys to and like I said to. And I still don't get this. I still don't get the FPS increase. Don't know what it is. Make sure cylinder's volumed, and it's not the problem. But as soon as I change the faucet washer to sorbothane or sorbothane to faucet washer, it fixes itself. So I'm not really certain what's going on there. I'm still theorizing it, and I'm pretty sure some other guys have got it down. And maybe I'm just skipping out on something here. But that's really all I got, guys. If you have any questions about AOE correction or anything like that, please comment below or go to my Instagram account, ask me a question, or if you know who I am on Facebook, you can even message me on there. Until then, guys, I'll see you guys later.